back to another video with the chocolate dogs thanks so much for tuning in so you know i have to ask how are you feeling today how are you doing have you looked in the mirror today and told yourself that you're beautiful mm -hmm. if not stop this video go ahead and do that and then come back and we can get started yes so as you can see we have some very special guests in the back <laughs> um you guys have been wanting us to add to our melanin yes. men in medicine series so here you guys have it i'm going to have them introduce themselves you can start pressing Okay, so I'm Preston Igwe from Southwest Houston, Texas. Um, I'm a second year medical student at UTMB in Galveston. My name is Jay Z Kuzuma, also from the Southwest, born and raised in Houston, Texas. Please. Second year medical student at the University of Chicago. And I'm Rowan Babajide, also raised in Southwest. Um, second year medical student at the University of Chicago. Yes, so what are you guys interested in, like in terms of specialty, do you guys know what you want to do? Uh, I've been interested in surgery for a minute. Okay, bad. Nah, yeah, so, I mean, I don't know, like, what kind of surgery specifically, mm -hmm. but definitely want to be using my hands and, you know, physically, visibly changing things. Mm -hmm. I'm also interested in surgery. Not so certain about it. Definitely know I want to do something procedural. That's why emergency medicine has also been on the back of my mind. And I came into med school thinking surgery, and I realized I was all the way there. So now that's all the way there. So, so now I'm thinking, actually, I'm really, really interested in psychiatry. Yay! Oh, yeah, yeah, me yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, this is lit. Uh, yeah, psych or emergency medicine. It's like 90 10 at this point. Yeah. 90 yeah. like, yeah. oh, 10? Yeah, so oh, wow. I'm like 50 50. Hmm. 50 50 okay. with what? OB and psych. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know if I want to like use my hands yet. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, we'll see. And lifestyle too. So. Yeah, I'm 50-50 on family or internal. Cause you know, surgery, you don't think it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all that. I'm gonna do mental surgery though. Psychiatrist, we cut deeper. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. What? Yes. <laughs> 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 I don't know what you're working on. as a med school student and you realize that you know from this moment on like you don't have to work hard but mm -hmm. but you you've achieved your goal mm -hmm. and that was like that was super super profound for me because there were times when I wasn't even sure that I was going to make it to med school mm -hmm. so you know it was, <laughs> same thing so it was preach it was my, my best moment for sure okay um for me it, 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 I can't pin it on one exact moment. If you had to ask me one exact moment, it might be when I received my phone call from mm -hmm. my university. That's how they like. That's how they. Oh deliver. wow! That's I just, got email. That's just, <laughs> that's, just, that's just that's just how they deliver mm -hmm. their acceptances cool. to all the students that they that's accept. Crazy. So it's not like anything really special, awesome. but um, it definitely made me feel special. Mm -hmm. I remember I was walking from the grocery store when I got this phone call and. Man, bro, I was running, I was jumping with these bags. You know, the lady was still trying to talk to me, but I was like, mm -mm. sorry, can I call you back? My bag is secure. You have to say nothing else. I had to go call my mom. Right? That's the first person. You know, no, I was crying. Bro, for real. No, for real. Like, no, for real. No, like, ugly cry. No, for real. The first thing I told her, too, because she was mad I took a gap year, I was like, look, I told you. <laughs> So that was probably one of the proudest moments, mm -hmm. but um, I think just like even getting to campus, like orientation mm -hmm. and realizing that the rest of my classmates are also like pretty cool, down to earth people that I could vibe with for the next four years mm -hmm. was also like a really, I don't want to say rewarding, but very special moment because I definitely thought med school about to be dry. <laughs> it really isn't though. That's what people, that's what Mr. Said. <laughs> I mean, it can be. It depends on your class. Yeah, yeah. Um, for me, that defining moment um, actually happened really recently, a couple weeks ago. Uh, it was when I got like 
his scholarship from the Houston Medical Forum. Oh, uh, congratulations! congratulations. And that was really cool um, because mm-hmm. I feel like that was a moment that really cemented like it in my mind that yo, I'm not just in med school just trying to survive. I'm out here really, you know, doing work. You know, mm-hmm. out here thriving, out mm-hmm. here really. And it really was like, okay, this is where I belong, right? Because mm-hmm. during the med school journey, you're thinking, am I choosing the right schools? The school I got into, is that where I'm really meant to be? Is where I'm going to be at my best? And that was like, okay, I'm in the right place. God placed me here for a reason. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, you know, really make a difference where I was planted. So that was a really big moment for me. What's, the, what's been the most difficult part about med school? And how have you kind of like pushed through despite all of the, I guess, the hardships, you yeah, have obstacles and stuff? Um, so what I, what I, the biggest lesson I've learned, I guess, not the biggest, but one of the biggest is like, just keep putting yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like that one opportunity might not have been it for you, but there are other opportunities that will present themselves. And, you know, even though I didn't get some of the roles that I thought I wanted, I probably would have wanted had I got them. Other opportunities presented themselves that I ended up, like, flourishing in. Mm -hmm. Um, I ended up being an orientation co-chair for this new class. And that was actually a really wonderful opportunity to get to know the new class. Because, as you know, like, from year to year, you really only know your class. Like, you definitely don't know the third year class. You might know a few of the fourth years, but honestly, you don't really get to branched Mm -hmm. easily outside of your class so it was nice getting them form that connection with the newer class and help you know usher them into like our culture and what it means to be a student at our university Um, and other opportunities that i've since had that have been really really great for me i would say for me two of the biggest struggles kind of like stem from i guess the same issue of Mm -hmm. just being one of the very few uh black faces in a predominantly white space and on top of that a black male face which we all know is like very, very underrepresented yes. in medical school. So one up would be, first of all, you know, like imposter syndrome. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of us have felt that at one point. Yes. Where it's like, am I really, like, you know, meant to be here? Can I right. really accomplish everything that I want to accomplish? Or am I just a quota that they have to fill? Mm-hmm. And like, you know, it's not that I didn't believe in my abilities. Like I knew I was capable, but it's like when you're the only black man in like your small group or the only black man, like, a, and on the campus for, I don't know, like an event or something, then it's like, yo, it's, it's sometimes it really, it really like kind of um, makes you question yourself about what, you know, why are you really here? But then it's like, when you do the work and then you see yourself thrive and see yourself succeed in classes, in small groups, in the social spaces, then it's like, okay, I'm definitely capable. I just gotta make sure that I never doubt myself, never stop believing in myself, mm-hmm. and always doing <clears> the work. Because you know how they always say you gotta work twice as hard? Mm-hmm. So if you gotta work twice as hard, then work twice as hard. However, you gotta also make sure that you surround yourself with people who are gonna build you up mm-hmm. and be a support system for you and be that tribe that can help you get to the finish line. Mm-hmm. And the second sure. thing I would say would be like, the minority tax, and I guess for people who might not know what that is, is the fact that like when you are in a predominantly white institution and you're one of the few, um, I'd say, ethnic or um, minorities on that campus or minority in any way, then you're often the person people look to mm-hmm. when it's time to do those like related activities. For example, yeah. like if you're just like, oh, we need people to like, you know, be on a diversity board or a council or something geared towards diversity you're always the one people ask and it can be a good thing but it can also be sometimes feel like a little bit of a burden because Mm -hmm. you also have to do that while (coughs) doing school work while doing research while doing extracurricular activities and then the time you take to do like the extra stuff takes away from you know studying Mm -hmm. and that's something that my peers who don't have the extra you know task don't have to worry about Mm -hmm. and sometimes that can put you at a disadvantage academically Mm -hmm. but then one thing that I actually learned recently at, at a conference is that you gotta learn when to say no, um, mm-hmm. when those opportunities don't benefit you, and then you gotta learn how to pivot and, and flip them, right? So if you're doing these extra things, you're on these extra councils, you're doing these extra meetings, um, because it's necessary, because they need people who look like us to be in those spaces, you gotta make sure also you can flip that, put it on your CV, mm-hmm. and make it into a scholarly project, right? Yes. And maybe even get some type of abstract or poster presentation or publication out of it. So learning how to make it count twice. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say probably the biggest struggle for me has been like battling with the anxiety of trying to stay competitive. 
you know, it's like, like I said, like once you get into med school, you know, you're going to be a doctor. And mm-hmm. so that milestone is, is checked off. But yeah. then, you know, it's like, what kind of doctor am I going to be? <laughs> yeah. like we were talking earlier about how a lot of us are interested in competitive specialties. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just kind of the, the fear that, or not the fear, but the worry that you won't get there again. Um, so like, fortunately, a lot of my, all of my classes now are pass fail, so my grades don't necessarily count against me. Mm-hmm. But um, like outside of that, you know, it's like, am I, am I doing enough research? Am I publishing enough? Mm-hmm. Um, am I shadowing enough? Am I making the connections that I need to be making to put me in the best position to get a good letter of recommendation and get into a great program? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like all of these things that you have to be doing at once while also um, paying that minority tax, the person mm-hmm. was talking, excuse me, talking about, you know, it, um, it, can take, it can take a toll on you. Um, unfortunately, like, I don't really know the, the answer for it. They say a little bit of stress is good. You know, it, it kind of motivates you to, okay. to work harder. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, what, what Jay-Z and I have tried to do, because we're roommates and classmates, um, is kind of hold each other accountable, mm-hmm. making sure that we're doing exactly what we need to be doing to give ourselves that extra edge. But honestly, I think, I think that's what it comes down to, is just having that drive. Yeah. Um, and you know, a support system and someone to hold you accountable and be better. So Preston already uh, touched on this, but how do you two feel about like being a black male in medicine since they're not very good with you? Um, so this is gonna vary from institution to institution, right? But mm-hmm. on our campus, like out of 90 students, there are 20 black students. And um, mm, that's good. Solid. Yeah, we will. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> it's like just under a quarter students are black and for me, that was not something I had ever dreamed of. Like I went to a PWI for mm-hmm. college. I went to Washington Lee University, a small liberal arts college in like nowhere, middle of nowhere, Virginia. Um, I literally lived that experience when I was in undergrad, like being the only black person in all of my science classes. I think I was the only black person to graduate as a pre-med major on my mm-hmm. campus. Um, so like that wasn't new to me and I was even taught to like expect that so when I came to my institution and I haven't been in circles where I was the only black person anymore and certainly not in circles where I was only surrounded by white people um, that has been very very encouraging and it's something that University of Chicago really really pushes for I work intimately with the admissions team as a multicultural affairs admissions liaison and it was literally our job to like recruit multicultural students to the university um, so as far as like those struggles, I get it. I, I am familiar with them. I don't think that I deal with them as, um, I guess, as intimately as as uh, hardly as um, you might at your school. But I, I know that's the thing, and I've already been told that that will reemerge <laughs> right. when yeah. you get into residency and into your practice, yeah. and as time moves forward. And I mean, we still recognize that it's a privilege to be here. Yeah. You know, Preston and I were just at uh, the AAMC National Conference, and we went to a, a session called the, the Annual State of the Physician Workforce, and they reported on how um, black applicants, like black male applicants, the percent of applications to, to med schools are, you know, dreadfully low. Right. It's um, worse now than it was in 1970. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so even getting to the place where we were able to and felt confident, confident enough to apply to med school was a testament. Um, so we, we recognize even though we were in a place where we have been fortunate enough to experience racial diversity in, in our med school, that nationwide it is still a problem. And so yeah. like being able to be here and being able to kind of work to change the, the face of medicine is an extreme privilege for us. I want to ask y'all about y'all's pre-med journey. So like, was it that difficult for you? Was it like not as hard for you? Or like, what was it like to just be a pre-med in college? Did you have fun? Did you, were you buried in your books? Like, you had that balance. <laughs> How was it for you? Because some people, often, like a lot of our supporters, they seem to be very like high strung yeah, and like just. really focused <laughs> on school and not really like doing community service or not doing leadership opportunities and like being a well-balanced competitive mm-hmm. applicant. Mm-hmm. So how did you guys do that at an undergrad? That was tough. Look, well, I'll say that's <laughs> all. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, first of all, uh, I went to University of Notre Dame, class of 2016, already. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Go Irish. <laughs> go Irish. He was ready. What, what's he <laughs> <tired? laughs> <laughs> 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 No, I thought that was, you know, so much. He was showing the little time. 
clover. So I went to Washington and Lee University again mm-hmm. um, in Lexington, Virginia. Uh, like very, very small liberal arts college. Okay. And I went to Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut. Also a very small liberal arts college. So I was going to say our pre-med journey started even before college because um, we all went to the Bakey High School, you know, mm-hmm. class of 2012. Nekka, you went there too. No. <laughs> that's um, how we know each other. <laughs> yeah, that's how we know each other. And so we were best friends pretty much since the first year of school. Aww. Always together, um, y'all. So they yeah. were always together. <laughs> so we, we talk about tribe, we talk about support system. <laughs> <laughs> These guys right here, they're like they're my brothers, honestly. Um, so they we really been supporting each other since day one. We all knew we want to go to med school. Mm-hmm. We're all Nigerian. So we just all kind of understand each other's like backgrounds yeah. and like the, the struggle and the work that it takes to, we have to put in. And so it was just really been a, a blessing, a privilege to have them behind me and have them supporting me. We're going through the, the blood together, you know, trying to make it. And so having that support system throughout high school and then throughout college definitely made the low points brighter mm-hmm. because when I had finals or, you know, when I had trying to figure out when to apply and what extracurriculars to do, even though we didn't talk as often in college because we're all so busy, I always knew I had them behind me. I could mm-hmm. call them up, I could text them whenever. And so having that support system was really good. But trying to make it as a pre-med, especially as a black pre-med, is definitely difficult because one thing we talked about is like <laughs> the absence of a lot of mentorship. You yeah, know, if you're a first-generation college true. student and you don't have anyone in your family who's ever went to med school before you, you don't really have that guidance that a lot of our peers seem to have from like mm-hmm. birth. And so, <laughs> no, honestly, like, my yeah. dad is a doctor, like, my granddad is a doctor. Yes, they got a wing named after my great grandfather. No, like, really? <laughs> no, it's so true. <laughs> like, That's so true. And so, trying to navigate those waters, you know, for the first time by yourself is really difficult. Mm-hmm. And so, you got to know where to be, um, what to apply to, what um, shadowing opportunities are available, try to do research, and try to figure all that on your own. So it can be a very bewildering process. So I say definitely it's important to have some type of support system and other people who are doing the same thing so y'all can go through it together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, it wasn't easy. Um, I think I think this is what I tell people often. Um, I also pledge Greek on my campus, um, uh, Alpha Phi Alpha. And so during, you know, afterwards you get a lot of interest that will ask you like, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that, do a million different things. And so one piece of advice that I've kind of held on to is that you can manage, I'll say, two things really, really well. I think it was like not impossible to like stay on top of your academics and have a social life or stay on top of your academics and be an athlete on campus or you know, be on top of your academics and, you know, all Greek life or whatever else thing that you're doing. But I think the minute you try to add a third thing into that mix, it becomes really hard to juggle. Um, And so I think the big lesson there is like prioritization. Um, Not to say it's impossible, but it's really rare to see an athlete that's, you know, an honor student and at all the parties. Like, it's <laughs> no, right. it's true. not true. easy. True. Something's going to take a hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and whatever you let slack off will take that hit. And it mm-hmm. tends to be your academics, which is why I usually say try not to spread yourself too, too thin. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as, like, you know, focusing on all the other opportunities outside of your academics, really, when I was on campus, my academics was, like, first and foremost. And that meant that I didn't have as much time to do all these volunteer opportunities and leadership opportunities throughout the year. I did some, but probably not as much as like everybody says to do, Mm -hmm. which is, and that's another topic too. But what I would really, really recommend is like during your summertime, make sure that you're using that productively. Yes, for sure. Like if you need to get up on your grades and take some more classes yeah, it's cheaper too mm-hmm. i mean i college. was and the thing is everybody's like volunteer volunteer do some research research and, and like how do i do that how do i do that it's as easy as an email honestly that's how i found my a opportunities oh a lot of emails <laughs> a lot of emails a lot of emails sometimes they don't respond show up i'm gonna say you can go to their office yeah Somebody, some people won't get back to you. Some of these faculty members are literally fielding 300 emails a day, so yeah. don't take it personally. Right. But some will get back to you, and that'll change everything. Yeah. 
And if your school is whack and nobody wants to get back to you, <laughs> then honestly, you can just Google summer research opportunities. Yeah. For yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a host of opportunities at yes. all these different oh, schools yeah. that will pay you to sure. come for like three yeah. months, yeah. do yes. some research, mm -hmm. or do some clinical activities, and that looks great on your resume as well and in the application. Yeah, definitely don't waste the summer. There's too many opportunities out here for you to not be taking advantage of summers. Yeah. Um, so Jay-Z probably had the best grades out of the three of us. That's why he's been. Black scholar, in case I ain't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, right here. Black man, what's good? Take notes, right? I need to take um, notes. It came at a price. It came at a price. That's true. Yeah, I definitely visited him on his campus my senior year, the weekend of my birthday. Mm -hmm. And I remember having to go to the library with him <laughs> to study the bio. The birthday weekend. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's dedication. Yeah. 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 Get you any jeans. No excuses, to be honest. Oh, no excuses. Get you a friend that's serious. I came from Connecticut to look in here to hang out with you. He was getting that bad. Wow. He was mad. During the application cycle, I came to visit Jay-Z in Chicago because he was working there over the summer. And we went to the library too, the medical library. He's like, yo, we gotta apply these applications. Bro, we, yeah. yes. we got new residency, I mean, yes. these not residency, these are secondaries. And we was in the medical library. I'm yeah. like, bro, yeah. bro. Yeah. 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 Let me yeah. expound yeah. on that story one time. That's when he taught me one of the biggest lessons in my life. Only closed doors are in your head, bro. Facts. We bro, walk into this hospital, right? <laughs> oh, I yeah. Only, only closed doors are in your head. It's all in the mind. Okay. Like for the real. The only closed doors. The only closed doors are in your head. Okay. In your head. The yeah. only reason we're yeah. saying that, right? We're walking through this hospital, and I was only like a, like a low-level research assistant, so I had no clearance anywhere, right? And we looking for some computers, and I was like, bro, I don't know if that door is open. I don't think my badge is gonna work. It's probably not gonna work. This man Preston said, bro. We gotta go. We gotta try this door. You don't know what happened. What happened if we push on the door? Push on the door. And it opened. <laughs> okay. Jay's about to walk past the door. I was like, my God, we don't know. The door can be open. Oh, my God. Wow. So what if it was closed? Wow. 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 And you can't push it. Sure you can't push, push it. <laughs> you break it. You break it into. That's right. Don't break it into. You don't, don't think about falling. You think about flying. That's what right. it is. Right. True. Wow. Just hmm. Dropping gems. My point is, um, in pre med, I wasn't quite as studious, and so my um, my GPA was like decent, but it wasn't it wasn't great. You know, and that's one of the reasons I was like, oh. I'm like, it makes mess cool. Mm -hmm. But um, my advice would be like, if you are in that uh, in that boat, then you have to find other ways to make yourself competitive. You have to find other ways to excel. Mm -hmm. yes. And there are a lot of other ways to do it. We yeah, talked yeah. about research, we talked about volunteering. Mm -hmm. Mentorship is a big one. Just finding someone to speak to your character and your person. Um, also, like on my campus, I was just a leader. I, I did a lot of, I started a lot of projects. And so I, I was able to, you know, kind of getting close with a lot of the administration and the staff and um, was able to accomplish some big some big things. I, I like ended up founding a scholarship for students of color while I was um, a student at Wesleyan. And that was like one of the big experiences. Like that that journey was kind of one of the things that I spoke to in my personal statement because you know it was really meaningful for me and pro profound for me. So I would just say like if you aren't any Jay-Z, um, <laughs> which, which a lot of us aren't, yeah. then just find a way to make yourself uh, stand out some other way, yes. but but grades are important. Grades are probably yeah, the most important, important thing yeah. that you know you could do. Make sure you get your academics. Right. I will also add this: it's not your grades alone. Don't think you're a four point oh student. Mm -hmm. You you know didn't do anything else, but you are gonna go to the med school of your dreams yeah. like hell no. Nah. Yes, you will. You need to have the leadership <laughs> opportunities. Outside. You need to be. It, you need to have like everything real on set as well. Yeah. As yeah. Grades. Right. It's not just one thing. Well. Now it's time for our drop a gem segment. Oh, good little drop a gem. So we're gonna have them kind of like go down the line and just give you guys some advice. I'll say two things. Two things. Um, and these were lessons that I learned predominantly in med school, but I think they apply for whatever you're doing, even if it's outside of medicine. Um, the first the first lesson I learned is like run your race. Um, yeah, you I'm know, watching. it's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot of smart people mm -hmm. in this field. Wow. Very very yes. smart. And while that is a benefit to you, 
to be in that area and be able to like learn from mm -hmm. them via osmosis or just being in their vicinity it can also be discouraging mm -hmm. like sure. the teacher will ask a, the professor will ask a question you have no idea what the answer is <laughs> but, but somebody else know and they fast with it yeah they you know, real quick and you look at my like, <laughs> what i've seen is like even sometimes you'll answer that question and then you'll tell yourself like the only reason i know that answer is because i just read that material mm -hmm. last night yeah like, that's the only way anybody knows right. information you know that's what i'm true. saying like nobody was born with that knowledge they all reviewed it some people are reviewing stuff in advance Regardless, you're going to get there as well. That's what I'm saying. Make sure to run your race. Um, and don't be too discouraged or focused on what other people are doing. Mm -hmm. My second gem is also something that I found. I think personally, I was taking things hard on myself when I was talking about like missing those leadership opportunities. And um, even like sometimes like your grades, you'll like in, in college, I was above average. Mm -hmm. In med school, I'm... Average, average, if not below sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, like, yeah. it, it can get really, really discouraging. It yeah. can get different. And um, one thing that I really want to say is, like, I think it's easy for people to, like, get jealous or insecure or, you know, like, really disheartened. You can go home for a night, cry about mm -hmm. it, eat your heart out with some ice cream, watch some Netflix, you know escape from the world yeah. but then the next day you got to get it back on like in right. fact instead of like being discouraged and jealous i feel like i was being jealous i was like let me take this moment to be like almost motivated mm -hmm. almost inspired like if they can do that i can do it too mm -hmm. you know so i would just like use that to like push myself even further oh, my gems <laughs> also i'm gonna give two as well because um one i would say definitely lift as you rise I think we talked about already how blessed and privileged that we are to be in this position to be in medical school. Um, and definitely do not forget where you came from. Do not forget the people who want to be in the position where you are right now. And so always give back. So that's something I did when I was in college through the community service and just being a leader. And also now in med school, um, being a part of SNMA and working with the community and talking to students who want to be where I'm at, where I'm at in a couple years. And don't forget to, if you find an opportunity for someone, give show them the opportunity. If you have opportunities that might be even for you, but maybe you don't have the time or maybe you don't really want to have the desire to do it, but you think somebody else might, share the opportunity. We all got to make it together. You know? yeah. We all got to eat. So that's one thing that I always carry with me is to lift as I rise. I would say just, you know, spend time outside of the curriculum. True. You know, a lot like the curriculum is going to teach you how to uh, be a doctor, how to prescribe medicines, how to uh, learn pathology, whatnot. But a lot of the growth happens outside of that, mm -hmm. happens in the hospital, happens at these conferences, mm -hmm. happens with meeting like other peers um, and meeting other mentors. So I would say, you know, try as, as much as you can to find opportunities outside of, you know, the medical school building. Um, and then, you know, just take time to have fun, really. Like we were talking about how at least I thought med school was going to be really stressful. Mm -hmm. It was going to be like, you know, I'm in the hospital for the, the library. <laughs> 24 hours a day, um, and I wasn't gonna have time to really enjoy myself or care for myself, but fortunately my experience hasn't been that way. You know, my, my school has, has made it possible, and I feel like a lot of a lot of schools make it possible for you to take time to, you know, have, enjoy, uh, do your hobbies or explore, you know, outside interests. They encourage you. Yeah. Yeah, and, they really do. And I, right now you definitely gotta take advantage yeah. of that time. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming thank on our you. channel. Thank really you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Yes. Um, we will leave their contact information. If y'all have like any questions for them specifically, then we'll put it in the info box. Um, don't bombard them. We're still in the <laughs> <laughs> Um But yeah, and only med school pre med questions. Yeah, don't don't, you know, like, <laughs> don't be inappropriate. Um, <laughs> But yeah, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Facebook, Facebook Instagram, Instagram, all that. Share this video with a friend or two. Or five. You know? <laughs> and yeah, we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.